So welcome to our weekly integral upload and in this video I would like to show how to solve this integral, how to derive a formula for it. And it seems to be quite complicated because of this power of three halves. And uh, if we try, for example, to take it by parts, it's apparent that we're only, only going to complicate matters. Uh, but if we're thinking about substitution, well, at first sight, it's not clear what substitution should we make. Uh, and I'll show that there is a fairly standard substitution to try in this case. Whenever we have an expression x squared plus a squared uh, to some power, one over eight, there is a substitution that is worth trying. And but to see it, maybe I will try to give some insight. For example, suppose that I have this integral uh, that we all know very well. Suppose that we have this integral x squared plus a squared. Uh, then we know that the solution to this integral is 1 over a, and just arc tangents of x over a plus a constant. Yeah, we know it just from the table of integrals. And now that we know this, there's actually, you know, when you know the answer, then it's easier to come with the solution. Uh, and I'll tell you what I mean by this. So when we know this answer, it seems to be a good idea yeah, to substitute for x, x would be a tangents of theta. And we'll see why, because this means that if we substitute theta, then theta is actually uh, just the arctangents of x over a, okay? And, uh, well, it seems to be obvious that this substitution should, should solve this integral and uh, quite easily. And let's see what it does to this integral. And then we'll draw uh, an insight and we'll try to make the same substitution that made a miracle for this one. It will also make miracles for this integral. So let's see if we compute uh, here uh, what we'll have when we compute x squared plus a squared. Well, uh, then we substitute uh, uh, a squared and let's just take it outside of the brackets. Here we're going to have tangent square of theta and we're going to have plus uh, one, right? And this is a well-known identity. So if I step aside here to rederive it, so we know that cosine squared plus sine squared uh, is always equal to one just by the definition of the functions on the unit circle. And now if we divide everything by the cosine squared of theta, then we are going to have one plus just the tangents squared of theta. And this is all gonna be equal to one over the cosine squared of theta. Okay, so this is, this is nice. So this is actually equals to a squared over the cosine squared theta. Okay, and if we compute dx, then dx is just a over the, the derivative of, the, of tangents here is one over cosine squared. So this is one over cosine squared of theta d theta. Okay, so now armed with all those uh, uh, computations, we see that if we go to this integral and we substitute here, uh, instead of uh, x a tangents theta, then we're going to have uh, a squared over the cosine squared of theta and one of these we're go actually going to have here cosine squared of theta divided by a squared. This is just x uh, squared plus a squared one over this. And when we plug in dx, then what we're going to have, this is all times a divided by cosine squared d theta. And then we see the miracle happening the cosine squared is being reduced here. So what we have is actually one over a integral d theta. And this is easy. This is one over a theta plus a constant. But then we know that theta, so this is one over a, and here we have theta is just, as we can see here, it's just the arctangents of x over a plus a constant. So even if I uh, wouldn't know the solution to this integral, and I would have guessed that this is a good substitution to try, I could rederive it, you know, by this very beautiful and elegant substitution. So let's see what this substitution does to this integral. So we actually made uh, most of the computations that we need. So the x squared plus a squared is going to be a squared over the cosine squared of theta. So let's just move it up and see again. So here we have the integral of dx divided by x squared plus a squared 
all the way to the power of 3 halves. And again, we substitute x to be a tangent of theta. So um, x squared plus a squared is going to be um, just uh, a squared over the cosine squared of theta. And when we take this to the power of 3 halves, this is to the power of 3 halves. And this is clearly a to the power of 3 divided by the cosine to the power of 3 of theta. OK, this is good. And uh, again, dx is just going to be a over the cosine squared of theta. So when we plug it all in, uh, and here remember that we need to have one over this expression. So when we plug it all in, we have here cosine to the power of 3 of theta divided by a to the power of 3. And here we're substituting here the theta, of course. And here we have a over the cosine squared of theta. And here we have d theta. And again, the magic happens that cosine squared is re almost re fully reduces with cosine to the power of 3. So uh, let's let us continue here. So what we get is an integral of 1 over a. And here, this is just the cosine of theta, d theta. And this is, of course, 1 over a uh, sine of theta plus a constant. Okay. And uh, we know that uh, actually a, uh, no, not a, this is 1 over a sine. And theta is actually the arc tangents of x over a. Uh, OK, and plus a constant. And this is a completely valid answer. But there was no clue for the trigonometric functions there on top. And maybe we can uh, write it in, in another way. Um, ju this is just for, for beauty. For the sake of beauty, let's, let's try and see what we can do here. Well, uh, sine of theta uh, is just uh, the tangents of theta times the cosine of theta. Well, we all know, know that. And from what we derived, the cosine of theta, we need to take, if we were to take 1 over tangents squared of theta, 1 over this would be cosine squared of theta. Uh, uh, one, 1 over cosine squared of theta. So when we take the square root of this, uh, this is actually uh, 1 over uh, the square root here, this is 1 over the cosine theta. And when we take 1 over this, this is actually this is actually cosine theta. And when we multiply it by the tangents, then we get this identity. So sine of theta equals tangents of theta divided by 1 plus uh, uh, tangents of theta, theta squared. Now if we get back to this integral, so let us let's write it elegantly one last time. So the integral of the x over x squared plus a squared to the power of 3 halves is just, um, um, let's see here. So this is 1 over a, and write it as sine of arctangents of x over a plus a constant. And now let's have it 1 over a, and let's use this identity. So uh, we'll just plug in the arctangents of x over a into tangents, so we're going to have x over a. And downstairs, we're going to have the square root of 1 plus, and here, the tangents of the arctangents, so uh, that's x over a squared plus a constant. And so finally, if we were, you know, let's, let's rewrite it one last time. So this is x squared plus a squared to the power of 3 halves. And if we multiply by a here on top and on the bottom, so we would have 1 over a. Here we would have x because we multiply by a. And when we multiply by a downstairs here, then a goes with the square into the square root. So this is x squared plus a squared plus a constant. And so this method actually allows us to uh, derive the identity, or at least solve in principle, integral in a follow-up video we'll discuss this we can actually derive uh, the integral for x squared plus a squared to any power say n plus a half half integer and by the way the integral dx it also allows us to derive a formula for this at least in principle 
x squared plus a squared to the power of n. And when we make integrals by uh, partial fractions, then this turns out to be a key building block, the hardest one. But uh, we'll discuss all this in the next follow-up video. So thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button not to miss our weekly integral uploads. Thank you.